The Detroit Red Wings have shown significant improvement this year coming out of their rebuild, but they're not quite a playoff level team yet. They're loaded with young talent, but do have a few veteran guys on expiring contracts that they could still sell off at the deadline to acquire more assets. So today we're going to be looking at five players that I think the Detroit Red Wings should trade at or before the trade deadline this year in exchange for some younger assets in return. Let's go. Hey everybody, so today we're going to be talking about the Detroit Red Wings who have obviously had a very solid season this year compared to what the expectations were and what Detroit has been for the past few years. They've been one of those teams that's been stuck through a very difficult rebuild that's really had to strip everything down to scratch and start over. And Steve Eiserman, the general manager, obviously did a tremendous job with Tampa Bay. He's now doing the same thing with the Red Wings. Really has this team on the right track. There's a lot of positive signs going forward. A lot of great young talent. But they're still not quite a playoff team yet. And that's going to mean that they can sell the deadline this year and is much young talent as they have, they still do have some veteran guys that they can sell off at the deadline and acquire draft picks or more young assets that they can get back in return. So we're, that's what we're going to be looking at today. Five players that I think the Red Wings should deal at the deadline and get picks or other assets back in return for. Let's get into it. The biggest name on the list for me, the one that jumps out, is defenseman Nick Letty. He's 30 years old. He has final year of his contract this year, making $5.5 million. Now, the Red Wings will probably have to eat a little bit of that money if they're going to move on from Letty at the deadline. However, it's only for the rest of this year. They're not even close to the cap, so re retaining salary is not an issue for the Red Wings. And Nick Letty is a guy that they certainly would be able to dish off to a contending team looking to add to their decor. Uh, I think Nick Letty is one of those lower cost options for teams that miss out on some of the big name defensemen that are out there. So if you don't get Jacob Chikrin, if you don't get uh, John Klingberg, if you're not going to get one of those bigger names, you have to take a look to the next level down, and sitting right there is Nick Letty. Nick Letty's played over 120 playoff games in his career, so he's got a ton of experience. He's still only 30 years old. It feels like he's been in the league forever, but he's still only 30 years old, and he could be a fantastic depth addition to a contending team's defense core, so look for him to get moved. Another defenseman, another veteran defenseman, Mark Stahl, 35 years old, last year of his contract, making $2 million for, uh, for the Red Wings this year. Affordable deal, depth D-man, who's actually having a very, very solid season. Mark Stahl is plus 11 on the Red Wings this year. He doesn't have a lot of offense left in him, but he's a very good veteran defensive defenseman, brings a lot to the table in a bottom pair role, and could be a huge addition to the defense core of a contending team heading into the playoffs. And again, last year of his contract, so it makes sense for the Red Wings to you know kind of get something for him before he hits free agency. And even more so... If the Red Wings want to bring any of these guys back, they're all free agents at the end of the year. So they could realistically trade them at the deadline, let them go on a playoff run with a contending team, get an asset or two back in return. And then if they want to come back to Detroit, they can just sign again in the summer when they're a free agent and sign back with the Red Wings. And the Red Wings may not even have to lose a player for more than just like the last month of this season. So there, it makes a lot of sense for the Red Wings to move these guys that are on expiring contracts because they could always get them back if they really wanted to in the summer. Vlad Nemesnikov, the first uh, forward on the list here, 29 years old, same contract as Mark Stahl, one year left, remainder, remaining of this year, uh, $2 million. And Nemesnikov has 13 goals this year. He's been a pretty solid performer for Detroit. He's a guy that can come in, 
and uh, really make a difference in the bottom six, most likely on the third line for a contending team, maybe even the fourth line if they're really deep up front. But I think there are a lot of contending teams that would love to add Vlad Nemesnikov to their mid, uh, bottom six. And again, he's had a good year offensively. He's got 13 goals. Uh, he's he's having a really solid season, so he could be a big addition to a team looking to make a playoff run. And in goal, Thomas Grice. Now, Thomas Grice is not having the best year numbers-wise, and obviously he's 36 years old. He's getting towards the end of his career at this point. Um, but there are teams around the league that could really use just an added depth goalie. Now, he is making $3.6 million, and nobody's going to pay that for a third goalie. So, obviously, the Red Wings, if they do move Grice, is going to be eating some of the money there one way or another. They're going to be retaining some salary or involving another team to you know take some of that salary on if they have to. But there's teams around the league that I think would be interested in Thomas Grice, not to come in and be the starter. I don't think we're talking about a team like Edmonton who really needs a big addition and a big upgrading goal heading into the playoffs, but a team like maybe Calgary who obviously has Jacob Markstrom as their number one goalie. Dan Vladar is the backup. He's still very young. Um, a guy, a veteran guy like Thomas Grice could come in there and be the third goalie and then be that security blanket if anything were to happen to either Markstrom or Vladar. They would have a capable goalie to be the number three. I think Colorado's another team. Obviously, Darcy Kemper's their main guy. They've got Pavel Fransos backing up, but if anything were to happen to Kemper or Fransos, and both of those guys are injury-prone goalies, Thomas Grice could be a good number three to kind of give them a, a capable guy in that role. And, uh, you know, those are just two teams. But I think there are teams around the league that would love the added goaltending depth of Thomas Grice coming in and kind of being like a number three goalie for you. So that's definitely a possibility. And for the Red Wings, they don't, you know, they have Calvin Pickard, who can easily be the backup to Alex Nedeljkovic. So Grice is expendable for them because they have Pickard there who can come in and take over the backup role if Grice gets traded out. And finally... Fourth line forward, Carter Rowney, 32 years old, been around the league for a while now, a number of different teams. Last year of his contract, very cheap deal, making just $825,000. Very affordable for teams looking to add a depth forward to their lineup for that playoff run. Again, we see guys like, like this traded all the time at the trade deadline in the NHL. You know, just thinking of names in the past, guys like Derek Grant, Nate Thompson, Trevor Lewis. These are the kind of guys that are fourth liners, but teams want to add depth for a playoff run. Carter Rowney fits the mold for that. Uh, he does have four goals this year. He's not a huge offensive player, but he has chipped in four goals this year. Uh, he's a very good penalty killer. He can play all the forward positions, so he's, he's versatile up front. You can play him on the wing. You can play him down the middle. And again, he's not a guy that you have to have in your regular lineup, but can be a 13th or 14th forward that you can turn to if somebody gets injured, if you need an extra forward, if you need somebody to come into the lineup. Carter Rowney is that depth type player that contending teams love to add at the trade deadline. So those are five players that I think the Detroit Red Wings should move on from at the trade deadline, get an asset back in return, whether that's a draft pick or whatever you can get, get an asset back in return. These guys are all on expiring contracts. They're veterans that are free agents at the end of the year. Like I said during the video, if you really want them back, like honestly, I think Mark Stahl has fit very well in Detroit and has been a really good veteran mentor for a lot of the young players there. You can ship out Mark Stahl at the deadline, let him go on a playoff run with a contending team, and then he's a free agent come July. You can just sign him back if there's mutual interest there. If the Red Wings want him back, if he wants to go back to Detroit, you can just sign him back in the, in the summer, and you don't even really lose a player other than like the last month of the season. Red Wings aren't making the playoffs anyway, so... 
it's really not a big deal to, to let these guys go. And if there's some of them that you want back, you can try again in the summer and try and sign them to a new contract. They're all pending UFAs. So I think it makes a lot of sense. You want to get something back in return. Stevie Y is doing a phenomenal job with this team. I'm sure he's going to do a great job at the trade deadline again. But these are just five names that I saw on the Red Wings that I thought you know made a lot of sense for them to try and move at the deadline, get something for them, and then see what happens from then on as far as a new contract and whatnot. But they're all pending free agents, so you might as well get something rather than them just leaving for nothing at the end of the year. But there you have it, everybody. That's what I've got on the Detroit Red Wings. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, follow on social media. All those links are down in the description. If you'd like to further support the channel, our merchandise store, membership, and donation links down in the description as well. Keep spreading the word about this channel. Let's keep this thing growing. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll talk to you guys soon.